Ladies and gentlemen, I have infiltrated Wargamer Girl's house. I am in the inner sanctum, and I am alone tonight because there's no one else with me. John didn't show up. Miranda, who knows where Miranda is? It seems like, oh, she's right there. She's, she's so happy. She's so cuddly. Anyways. Infiltrate my house? I, you invited me. Damn right. To infiltrate. <laughs> to infiltrate. Anyways, welcome to the live show. Oh my goodness. We're live over here. So we have to use one computer. We had this really clever plan to use two, and we were going to like play this whole game about it, but my internet connection is not that amazing. Like, so. I'd be over here on this computer and I'd be like... It was going to be amazing, but that's not going to happen now. So anyway, thank you for whoever's here joining us tonight as we again start late. Uh, Chung may or may not arrive. He, he is supposed to, but he might be caught up on something, so we'll see. Um, tonight's topic is what? I thought you had the topic. Today's topic will be gameplay styles. So, mm. and I got some chocolate milk, <laughs> courtesy of a Miranda. It's true. Dan ever comes to visit you, just buy a gallon of chocolate milk. We'll see happy. how we'll see how far we get. The gallon challenge. <laughs> well, we got an hour. You're not allowed to get up. You have to see how far you get without leaving. <laughs> Stop making me laugh. Okay, so anyway. So gameplay styles, there's all kinds of different ones that people have. They're very aggressive, they're you know, more challenge uh, strategy based. You know, you, you don't want to kill any of the other's models or you want to make sure you have the, the fewest casualties on your side. So I'm curious to know about what your play styles are. And we can talk a little bit about ours because why not? Um, Do you know my play style? My play style is like, in your face. I love doing that. Although. So you play the shooting army? Well, yes. I'm aggressive with the shooting army, which is why I lose a lot with Signal. That's why I'm not a very good player. Oh, I don't know about that. I should switch to Cricks. Chung made it. Yeah, I'm here. I know you're alive, just so you know. We already started. We could not wait for you. No, it's fine. I thought it was for tomorrow. <laughs> That's why I was like scanning, you know, YouTube and checking stuff, the stats and stuff, and I saw your like post, and I'm like, it's scheduled for today. I wonder if it's for today. Oops. No, I, was no. gonna, I was gonna text you, and then uh, I got in a call with Austin, talking business. Oh, so, did Ooh, we lose goodness. you? Uh, we're not getting any comments. Maybe no one's commenting yet. That's true. I wouldn't blame them. We're very boring. Why? Talk about yourself. Not don't don't involve me in that. How are you doing, Chung? I'm doing fine. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Cool. It's so weird seeing you guys right next to each other. It's. I know. Like weird now. being next to each other. Crazy. She's, she has this well weird within aura. My, it's well within my personal bubble of like eight feet in every direction. Mm. There's like supposed to be uh personal space. Ah <laughs> Who has personal space? It, well me it and makes Nate are comfortable watching. <laughs> uh yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so, so we were talking about like play styles. So I know you're not a huge like war machine player, so I was gonna kinda keep it more general as far as like how you approach playing games on the table. Like if you like to be the most aggressive, heavy casualties or um Whatever. Nah, I just like um, I just I I'm usually play casual. Usually, uh, to the fluff mostly. Um, but I don't know. I can't get competitive. If I do, I'll become a major ass, and I try <laughs> not to do that. Because when I get competitive, I get competitive. So I I don't do it. Like you get mean, you like flip tables and stuff. That's what competitive means, right? Well, no, it's like, I don't care if you cry or anything. I just want you to die. There's no I don't care if you make a mistake. Right? You made a mistake. Wait, and you don't play War Machine? Because that's what War Machine's all right? about. That's why I got out of War Machine. <laughs> <laughs> no, I played War Machine for like six months straight. Went out into it, six months straight. It was all men off. I just burned everything I can see. Like, I was, yeah, back then I was really competitive, but I stopped being that way. Because, first of all, 
takes a lot of time to be competitive. You have to learn all the every single tactic, not just of yours, but every one else's, you know, um, yeah. army and stuff. You got to know what to, you know, how to, you know, go against them and stuff like that. And it's just too much. I got enough stuff on my plate that I have to worry about. That I have to research and stuff. Put it this way: I used to play Magic Absolutely. the Gathering competitively, and um. We used to do the you know the the circuit. They used to have the big you know it used to be a big thing back then, and all I did was magic. That's all I could concentrate. Always building decks, trying to find the right card, doing this, doing that. My team comes over. We do we stay up all night before you know a competition to figure out you know if the deck works or not and everything like that. I couldn't do it anymore. Okay, I got a question for you, Chung. Yeah. What 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 kind of deck did you play? Back then it was um when I was playing oh god which period. Like, way back, win-win, we were playing like with like tentacle decks and stuff like that. But it's always the same meta decks. Right? And then, um, I guess towards Ravnica, we were playing the, uh, oh, what is it called? The Angel deck. I was playing the Gorgodon deck. That was my deck back then. And stuff like that. So it depends on which period of, uh, which block you're talking about in Magic. Well, okay, let me ask another another question. What What, like, Deck do you prefer to have like what what deck do you enjoy playing the most? Like, is it more like white deck, more blue deck? Oh oh oh, oh, oh. I like I liked. It depends. I played everything honestly. White right. weenies, you know, bruised decks. <laughs> it's so hard to explain. I did everything. So, yeah, but like, was, was there anything that like you enjoyed more? No, whatever kicked anyone's ass. That's what I enjoyed <laughs> more. He enjoyed winning. All right, <laughs> winning exactly, but that's that's the way I played back then. It was competitive, so it was whatever won you played. It, it was like there was no enjoyment for me in the fluff or anything. I didn't care if it was fun or not. I just wanted to win. But that's the whole point. You win, you get big cash prizes. That's how it worked back then, you know. So that's why I don't do it with. First of all, I don't do it with forty forty k because competitive forty k is just whack, and there's a lot of whack people out there. And then, yeah, War Machine's really competitive, too. And that's probably one of the reasons why I try to stay away from it, because it's a big draw for me. Yeah. You know? Because, you know, it, it's, it's really hard. I, I can't convince you to play maybe just one little game at Valhalla? At Valhalla? I don't know. Half of my stuff is still unpainted. That's okay. I've got stuff. I haven't played for, like, two or three that's years. That's okay. I, I can show you. Uh, I'll, I'll bring some men off stuff. <laughs> I'll bring my avatar, my uh, harbinger. Sorry, not avatar. Harbinger? Oh man, yes. yes do That's that. all I played was her. <laughs> I like <laughs> harbinger. She was cool. That harbinger. See, she kicked butt and she was cool. So that's why I played her. She's an amazing looking model. It's true. Yeah, I mean, she's all floating around and she's all badass and she's all in white and that's just kind of appealing. I've seen the Saint Celestine conversion <laughs> using that model actually. I haven't seen that. I gotta see that. But yeah, uh, I'm I'm like way behind on War Machine. I know how it's played and stuff. I just haven't been keeping up with it. And we don't really have a War War Machine specialist right now for uh, WGC. Yeah. It's just hard to find someone I could trust. I'm definitely not trustworthy. So. Well, it's another thing too. A lot of War Machine players just kind of. Like, <laughs> Wow, he went there. No, 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 no. I'm not saying you guys. You guys are the exception. I mean, a lot of people are the exception, but the general, you know, it's just like, it's like dealing with Martin Riggs from, uh, you know, Lethal Weapon. You know, it's like, let's play. I'm going to kick your ass. Yeah, 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 I'm crazy. I'm going to kick your ass, motherfucker. Kind of people. It's just weird. Uh, at least here. I don't know if it's so, you know, anywhere else. I like Shigur that more in the local scenes, like, I've been to a Devjacon twice now, both times, like, the tournament people are really polite and nice and considerate. It's just... Well, I think you have to be at, you know, tournaments. That when you're at your meta or your local store, you know... Everybody's too comfortable. Yeah, everyone's too comfortable, you know, and I can't tell if they're kidding or, or serious half the time. So I just go back and play with my 40K guys or my fantasy guys that I know for sure that are, like, just kidding or not. I know it's very it's a very different breed of war gamers, in in our in our meta anyways, um you know some of the people I know which is fine, but when they come down for a tournament at my local store you know from another local store like down you know down the street or whatever, it's very different they're really competitive and they could get really 
you know, uh, really serious. In the same way that, that from 40K, you know, uh, competitive play. Yeah. Is some of them just take it way too seriously. And I can't, and then I can't really say anything and be a hypocrite because I used to be a competitive player. You know, I was a total dick too. I was way too serious. <laughs> I don't think being competitive requires you to be a jerk or. It does if you want to win. At least you know. Well, you know me enough to know that you got. If you want to get where you got to go, you got to do whatever it takes. Sometimes. But you've always been nice, sorry. Hmm. So no, you've always been nice. <laughs> well, yeah, because I'm not doing the tournament play stuff anymore. Well, just put it the way, maybe it's just me, but I am an, an ass when it comes to tournament play. It's like, do you want to play, you know, do you want to be competitive or do you want to play for fun? Okay, so here's the question, though, what you're talking about, so I'm being an ass or not, right? So mm -hmm. is it because they're being, like, rules Nazis, or if they're being, like, force of personality, they're just trying to push their will onto the rule or tweak the rule slightly so that it benefits them? I mean, because that would be... A real well... More than rule lawyers than anything, um, because they're really stingent on rules. Like, oh my God, you moved an extra millimeter. Yeah. You know, type of thing. I mean, they get nitpicky and stuff like that. We, I mean, unless it's a huge tournament, uh, we usually don't get those type of players who try to twist the rules to their advantage. But every every you know competitive play game has that. Forty K has that. You know, I mean, especially, you know, I've been reading all the backlash from Feast of Blades about 40K there. Oh. And, you know, yeah, claims, you know, the after the post-con drama, oh, cheaters, blah, 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 here they there, you know, and it's like, yeah, they're playing with the legal list, and then the tournament, you know, the organizers approved it, or, you know, just, they should have just kicked them out, and blah, blah, blah. So, you know, I think that's, it's just the nature of competitive play in itself. It's not just War Machine. I mean, I just I make fun of War Machine people because that's what you usually do, you know. Or make fun of a different game. If you're a War Machine player, you'll make fun of the 40k player. That's what I'm saying. Um. Why no. can't we all just get along? Except for those magic yeah, players. Yeah, you can't. Well, as long as you know all the war gamers stick together and go against the magic players, then I'm cool with it. Yes. <laughs> it's like um, I hate you. You're a war like machine all player. Space the game store all it, the time. It's true. They're it's everywhere. True. This is how it works. This is how it works. 40k, war machine. Hi, blah blah blah. I hate you guys. My game is better. Blah 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 blah. Mouthful players for uh, 40k, a uh, war machine. Our game's better. Blah blah. We flip cards. We don't roll dice. Blah blah blah. And then there's fuck the magic players. <laughs> 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 and I, you know, it makes sense though. But I don't know why it makes sense, but I don't know. Maybe you just like when you're in that community, you just you just get that whole attitude because everyone has that attitude. I think it has more more to do with gaming space. Yeah, I mean, it's just this reaction of like you come in, you're like, I've got two tables tonight. Everybody else is everything's filled up. You're annoyed just based on inconvenience. You want to hear a funny story? Is that this is my one of my always complaints about that, going to the game store uh, to all my board gamer guys. I'm like, you know, Magic players are so loud and unruly and they leave, you know, a mess everywhere and stuff like that. And once in a while, I'll do Friday Night Magic. I'll sit down and play draft. I had this conversation with the guy. He goes, he goes, yeah, I hate, I don't like those, you know, 40K players, you know. You know, it's like they, you know, I don't understand the game, blah, blah, blah. And they're so loud and unruly and they leave a mess. And I'm sitting here going... Yeah, they do, don't they? <laughs> Bastards. You know, it's, it's just funny. So both sides see the, each other the same, oh, yeah. and it's just like, you know, one day, you know, that great emperor is going to come along and you know, merge everyone together, and then they're going to, and then everyone's going to go against the Yu-Gi-Oh Yu -Oh players. No. Or those poor LARPers. <laughs> or LARPers. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. I used to be a LARPer too, so I can't really say. Yeah, LARPing's fun. LARPing LARP is fun. LARP. I've done like the sword fighting, but like just oh, a, oh, went through, like role playing ball. Oh, uh, dude, it's fun. Yeah. It's fun, but you feel like a complete dork, but it's fun. When I was doing, I mean, past that, like you start feeling a complete dork, and then you get into it, and then oh yeah, then you get into it, and you don't care. Just the and then you come back out, and you you just yeah. gotta let it go. Have you just gotta let your mind go and you just, just be free. You just don't tell anybody that you've gotten into this. Well, I used to be a huge role player. Well, I still am. I mean, it's all about, you know, I started role playing before wargaming. So the LARPing thing was a really fun thing to try, and I just got hooked. 
because now you're actually doing physical things out there. You know, they take over a park and then do this whole adventure, in it, which is kind of cool. I mean, it's a huge scale thing. It's not like, you know, you're sitting in front of a table. So at first I felt like a dork, but afterwards it's just fun, you know. Then you got those people who take it way too far, like we have in every hobby. You know, you're sitting at Denny's and then you've done your adventure and they're still in character. It's just like, dude, quit it. <laughs> I think you that's cute. Now. Yeah. Cute. Uh, weird. You know, for like I, the first five minutes. Are you here, my friend? <laughs> Ooh, Benoit just commented, you should watch The Knights of Badass. It's true. That's pretty good. Now, I would still argue Unicorn City is better, but Knights of Badass is pretty good. I'm totally lost. What are those, cartoons? Or? They're movies. Oh, they're movies? Mm -hmm. With LARPing involved. I think they're both on Netflix, too. Have you oh, seen Role Models? Out. I think that's the one. Where, yeah. like, at the end, they go and they LARP. Oh, it just, any movie with LARPing in it is, is just hilariously good fun. I, I go, yeah, the, what was that one? Um, Brothers? No. Step, no, not Step Brothers. Role Models. Yeah. That's the one. Yeah, yeah, that was a hilarious movie. And I was all LARPing. I'm like, oh, ha, ha, they're making fun of me. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Totally see it. I don't yeah, know if that's sad or not. There. It wasn't, it wasn't that bad, like... At the end, they kind of respect it, so. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Yeah, I know. If you look at my Facebook, and then if you dig deep enough, you'll see my LARPing group. I have pictures and stuff somewhere in there. But it's dug deep. You have to go in deep to find those pictures. I, I'm going go to go digging. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do right after this broadcast. <laughs> oh, no. I'm, it's there I'm, somewhere. I think I had one in my group. That's I took everything else down. I just had one in my group. I think I was tagged. I'm it wasn't excited. actually mine. I was trying to take it out, but it didn't happen. <laughs> they just keep retagging you? You're like, fine. Yeah. Like, tag, <laughs> tag. Who's taking his name out? Tag, tag. Ah. I just left it. It's cool. But yeah, let's go. We're fun. talking about gameplay styles for any of you just joining us. If you. Uh, I'd like to see what you guys' play style is. Like, again, if you're hyper-aggressive, if you are more about, like, killing more models than caring about winning the game, or, you know, really precise strategy, or, you know, keeping your characters safe. Why is it normal to me watching Daniel, you know, drink out of a huge gallon of milk? Wow. There's not very much gone. I haven't put it a big <laughs> dent at all. Yeah, I'm sitting here listening to Miranda, and I see him chugging a, a huge gallon of milk. I'm like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Dan. That's my strategy, is distract the opponent, and they're just like... Okay, there's one. Okay, so I've got a buddy, <laughs> army buddy, right? And it's brilliant. He would go to 40K tournaments, and he was out in Louisiana for a long time. He apparently the meta's pretty good out there. So his strategy, right, would be that he would go in, start unpacking his army. He played Imperial Guard, like pretty intimidating list. And he would take a bag of like jelly beans or gummy bears, unopened, and just set it on the table. And then he would just unpack and start playing, ignore the bag, but all of the other opponents that would come by, they'd be like, man, are those gummy bears? They look delicious. And they'd wait and see if like anybody offers. And like during the tense moments of the game, they would like look at it. <laughs> it was pretty impressive, actually. Like he would totally distract players with gun Psych damage. Psychological warfare. I was going to do a, a, a straight up video on that. But we used to do that all the time. Psychological warfare is probably one of the biggest things in magic tournaments and stuff like that. And it happens all the time in war tournaments, I know. See, I yeah. didn't play any war machine tournaments before, so. <laughs> I mean. Um, Matt from Mini Wargaming, he does that a lot. What, He'll, the psychological game? Tries to do it really subtly, but but Matt really he'll like say things to you and he'll like he'll mess with your mind straight up, especially when we're like play like Starcraft. I think he's got a lot less less that way because you know he's trying to be a good host, making oh. videos, having guests in. But before man, growing up with him, like playing Starcraft or other things, he'd like go you into doing things. And, oh, that strategy will never work. And you're like, that was like the only strategy that would beat you. And they like try to do all these. <laughs> I'm like his poor brother. <laughs> just oh, no. to find 
Oh yeah, Matt, Matt's brutal that way. That's great. Goading is like easy to do. It depends on your opponent though, but I know there, there's things I used to play. I used to mess with their minds and say weird things. Like a, a lot of things I do is like a lot of distracting. Like, oh, you can't do that. He said, yeah, I can. I go, are you sure? So I look in the book. That's like <laughs> kind of just messing up their game. Like they're, they're, you know, the biggest thing is about pacing. Yeah. That's pretty dickish. And then I would mess with their pace. If they're going good, I'll mess with them. Really hardcore too, and I'll keep doing it too just to get the win out of it. If I know he's winning and my tactics is just sucking. So I'm like, all right, all right, this is on me, so I got to make it on him now. So I'll do everything in my power to mess with his mind like you know you can't do that you can't run that he goes yeah I can you get an argument with him. take about five minutes to do it that will throw him up you know or a robot back there the what that a giant robot back there you know yeah, throw this no nope, I'm yeah. just excited to see you yeah and another thing is to make him think like you're you're being a dick that you're being a cheater so they'll always have to watch you so now you take their focus away from their game to watch your game and so you're trying to fudge the yeah, you try to fudge it a little. Like, move a little extra inch when they're like, and you know they're going to call you on it's a freaking inch, right? So they'll yeah. call you on it. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. And you do it again, <laughs> right? Do it a couple more times, and like, oh, you know, now I'm a cheater, but they don't want to call the TO over because they're kind of winning the game, right? So for whatever you do, you make them, you know, second doubt, so they have to watch your game and their game at the same time. You know, mass, you know the big, biggest thing is distraction. Chug, you're so dirty. I know. These are really dirty tricks. Like, you want to know another so really dirty tricks? Yeah. Nerd Rage. It's the, like one of the best tools you can do. Oh, if you no, can get someone to rage, you win. Nerd no, no, no. You, you, you Nerd Rage. You distract them like you're going to kick his ass if they win. Stop talking like a howler monkey at the table. Like you're like, you know, just be on the edge and look like you're about to flip the table type of thing. Or throw your own models. Don't throw their models. That's just, that's just horrible. About crossing the line, obviously. Like, yeah, you know, you know, I've done it before. I mean, sometimes it's real nerd rage. Sometimes it's not. What? Like, I'll pick up my model and I'll throw my model across the table. Like, you know, this is bullshit. Uh, how can anyone roll that many ones? Pick up my space wolves and throw it across the table. And then people were like, you know, like, oh shoot, he's really mad. So the game, you just get that, you know, like pissed off, like, go, it's your turn. Why are you taking so long? You know, and that'll, that'll distract them. Some people are, like, cold. They don't even, like, pay attention to you. Some people are really good that way. So you got to play a different game, like the cheater well, game. But you don't actually nerd rage. This is all the game. No, you don't really flip tables or anything. Just throw your own models. Don't break anything from the store or the organization. You break your own stuff. But breaking your own stuff is just as good. You put, like, my space marine, uh, my space wolves, I put it on the table. People are like, wow, how long did it take to do that paint job or blah, blah, blah. Right? Then you take that tank and throw it across the table and, you know, have it scrape the crap out of the paint job. Doesn't matter. It's weathering. Right? <laughs> so you just throw it across and it messes them up because they're like, oh, my God, this guy just, like, probably paid a thousand bucks on this paint job and he's just throwing his crap around the table. Like, it's nothing. He's really, really mad. Right? So, like, one of those things is if, the you know, your opponent kind of, that does bother him, um, is the best thing to distract him with. It's like, I don't want to do anything to really piss this guy off, even though I'm playing it right, but what if he rolls ones and he punches my face? So, Chung, what would you do if someone was using your tactics against you? I don't. I ignore them. I know what they're trying to do. I'll just play the game. Then, I'm, then I have to try to do something back to him, you know, or laugh. That's even worse, because there's two things about laugh, they know you're on the game, right? Or if they're really pissed, laugh and really mess them up. Because now they're really pissed at you, and they want to kick your butt at the end of the game. But that's fine, because you're just laughing. You know, like, oh, no, take someone that's really, really pissed because they keep rolling ones, right? They'll roll ones that go, go, dude, what's with all the ones? Man, you really suck, and just laugh in their face. Okay, that's happened to me, actually. You were like, wow, you're amazing at rolling ones. I'm like, I know. Yeah, but see, you play that game, and then, okay, they're faking mad, fine. They know, already know you're on to them. But they're really mad, fine, make them even more mad so they mess up. So we've had that, okay, and, and I know somebody who's done that, and uh, they were not allowed back at the game store for a while. But I'm not playing a game store, we're talking about like... tournaments. We're talking about tournaments. It's like... Oh, that's right, all, all's fair in the 
war. Yeah, and... when you're playing for something big like, say, Adept on so- Adepticon or something, it's all fair in love and war. Wow. All fair and dice and plastic. It's not like you're really cheating or anything. White medals. You know, you might get a zero in, you know, uh, what you call it, sportsmanship. But who is it? Get <laughs> <laughs> negative score. Yeah, it's like sportsmanship score. I'm like, you know, who gives a shit about the sportsmanship score? That's the yeah. only way I get prizes, Chung. Yeah, I don't care about the prize. I care about winning. But I don't know. It depends <laughs> on the right? Sometimes. The sportsman's yeah, actually. Beat me at Malibu. He's like, and I got so far because I beat you so bad. <laughs> well, it's true. In the Malifo League, I got on to the, the next level, the final, whatever, uh-huh. uh, playoffs, because because of my game against Brad. My first I, game was against Dan. I'm like, oh, okay. Bam! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty absurd, actually. So, all right, we've got some comments. Hanoi Gamer, he said, I'd sometimes go Juggernaut countercharging, and then quickly go, just kidding, just to keep the fun. You holding that milk, all right? Mm-hmm, yeah? mm-hmm. Okay, good. Yeah, it looks like it's about to I'm burping over here. Oh, that's what that is. I, right. Uh, Although I could burp in your face and see what everyone would, you know. She doesn't look excited about that at all. She doesn't look impressed, yeah. But does not do that. That's why I moved away from the players. Because sometimes the players go uh, go mad serious on the table. So the hyper-serious players... In tournaments, I get it, you know, but I think there's still always room to be friendly, so... I think, yeah, if, if people are being ridiculously serious, you should probably poke fun at them. Because you're still playing with toys. Point. It's a game, right? So. Yeah, you know what? Screw the serious people. The best way to go against serious is be as messed up and goofy as you can. That piss them off even more. Don't take it seriously, and they'll piss them off. Like, don't okay. take anything they do seriously, and it will piss them off. That's the thing about you know being playing serious players. They want to be serious about the game they're playing. You know, so don't be serious. That pisses them off the, the worst. Yeah, being jovial and just smiling and just just throwing like they want you to be defensive, they want you to be angry back, they want you to be intimidated, they want you to be anything but smiley and happy at the point. Exactly. Talk about meaning your shit. Talk about your girlfriend. Talk about the girl that you saw, like when you were having lunch, you know, and just like not even paying attention to the game, because they want you to pay attention to the game and play a game, play a serious game, damn it. Yeah, but her ass was so awesome, you know, and shit like that. You just, like, totally throw them off that way. They want to play serious, don't give them what they want. Well, I mean, I'm talking tournaments and stuff. I don't know about, like, just, like, going to a store. Every time, like like I say, I just play casual now. I don't care. I just have fun, you know. What you're saying at the end of this all, Chung, is that your style isn't so much any kind of style. You'll play any style on the table, but... Like, your mental, aggressive style can be, uh... <laughs> I stay away from it. I don't do tournaments anymore. And that's why I say I get too, I get too serious about it. You seem so yeah. friendly outside of games. Yeah, no. I mean, I told you, I know when you get really serious, because you get really serious. When you play, you have a game face. I told you that. Oh, yeah, Joey, uh, from the Joey Berry, she, she commented when I was playing Blood, Sweat, and Tears in 2013, Adepticon, <laughs> and she'd come by to visit because she got me this little, like, bag of chocolates, and she's like, here you go. And I was just, like, super focused. I'm like, oh, yeah, your wow. super focused face is very scary. It's she true. She came to me after, she's like, oh, do I just bring it? I go, just go bring it to her, whatever. And she came back to me, she mentioned it a little later, like, yeah, she was really serious. I don't know if I pissed her off or... I messed up her concentration. Or I go, oh, she just looks like that when she's playing. Was my face is shaped that way? No, I mean it's funny. I even have it on camera. I have it on video. Your face. I mean, I use it for the intro to the old bat reps I used to do. Thanks, Chad. It's okay. I had a camera right on her. She was like, you know, getting ready to play a War Machine game. It was like <laughs> depth gun. I just had the, you know, camera, and I just got her attention. She turned around, like. So to be fair, though, when you start a War Machine game, like, you start setting your stuff out on the table, like, immediately, after you have your list out, you're like, okay, deployment. What are, like, the laundry list of rules you need to remember for, like, each character's special abilities, and da-da-da, and what's he doing over there? And so you're just thinking. Um, apparently I forget to smile. Sorry. Yeah, you just get serious. It's okay. There's nothing wrong. You're, you're concentrating. That's what it is. That's what I chalk it up to. I'm just like, she's just concentrating. 
she just plays. She likes her game. Damn it. Nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. Well, Daniel should get uh, some doses of that anyway. Since he's visiting me, I plan to get a few battles with him. Mm -hmm. You guys haven't played yet, or did you just get there? Uh, he got here on <clears throat> Monday night. Yeah, we did exercise yesterday. We yeah. hiked a mountain. Yeah, it was awful. It was <laughs> great. It was weird stuff. Ugh. It was great. Are your legs sore at all today? No, I'm just worn out from it. I mean, we had 10 miles, and apparently I hadn't done it in a while, so I... Uh, oh, 10 miles? Oh. Dude, I can't even do, like, 100 feet. It was 10 miles up a mountain. Yeah, it was up a mountain. Oh, my God. It was pretty Good far. I, was, I wasn't I was expecting... Like, I heard 10 miles. I was like, yeah. I thought 10 kilometers, because I'm Canadian. So I'm just like, oh, yeah, 10 kilometers. That's not that bad. I'm like, oh, no, that's 16 kilometers. Uh, see, that, that breaks my nerve persona. I can't get out. That's too much sun. Ridiculous. But I do everything with the flap, so it's not that ridiculous. That's true. I don't think I've ever seen you wear anything but flip-flops. I did not bring socks or shoes in this trip. It's going to be cold as weeks. hell up there. <laughs> it's been two weeks with no socks on at all. Well, it's no big deal in New Mexico. Right. Yeah. Hiking, well, we were right? hiking through, like, cacti stuff, and, like, there's dangers of rattlesnakes and things. So I was like, hmm. Minor worries. But we didn't see any, so it was good. There's bobcats. And yeah, I don't see you having a problem with rattlesnakes. I think rattlesnakes are more scared of Dan than Dan is of rattlesnakes. <laughs> I just, like, look at it and just... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'll say to her, like, bring it. <laughs> Everything in the desert's aggressive. You gotta know that. Oh, I mean, be like, face it off. Just be like... Oh, yeah, I'm mesmerized. <laughs> totally. That snake like wouldn't stand a chance. <laughs> oh, jeez. Right then. Well, Dan, what's your play style? My play style? I already said it's. I like to play very aggressively. Face. I don't... Yes. Like, like right up in your grill. Just like as close as I can get. Just, just if you, well, okay. So I actually, I don't so much like to play mind games, but I like to get myself into a position where you don't exactly know what I'm going to do next, or when it seems obvious what I'm going to do, I'll do something different. Yeah. For more of like a late game thing or something different. And people don't always exactly know what my plan is. Or it just seems more random. And I like I like that kind of play style. Where, but I like being aggressive. I don't like just waiting. I don't have a lot of patience when I play, and that sometimes is my detriment. A lot of times, that's why I lose games. If I'm just a little more patient and let them be more aggressive, and then I can pounce on them, I can win. Excuse me. Too much chocolate milk. Uh, I can win more games, but but I don't. I'm very aggressive. And it's more fun that way for me. Yeah, it's more fun when I do casual, I think. I just get too wound up if I go competitive. Yeah. Yeah, one thing for me is when I play competitive, I don't get wound up at all. If anything, I get into like this like trance of just like relaxation. That's when I know I'm being most competitive is when I'm really relaxed. Is when I'm just like, it just kind of like, I kind of just zone in and I'm just like focused. And nothing can distract me. Someone can come in, I can say hi to them and go right back and just like, I know I'm doing it and it just, it feels good and it's like, that's when I'm being most competitive and it's just like, my heart's pumping but it just, it just feels good to be like, you're like, get in the zone you're like, yes. Yeah. But then when you still lose, it's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> one with the game. You just feel exhausted. Like when you win, like you get like the adrenaline, you're like, yes, keep going. When you lose, like all of a sudden you re don't realize how focused and how much energy you were using in your body and just like deflated. Oh and yeah. After playing War Machine, trying to be serious with War Machine, trying to be competitive, practicing with a lot of great, great players that I played with up in Alberta that went to the world championships in Poland recently and you know, they always place well in tournaments. Just like and just and never really reaching that point of being as good as them. I'm mm -hmm. kinda like no, I kind of miss these more relaxed games like 40K or, <laughs> or Fantasy. It's true. Just to have some fun and just relax. And I was with my friend in the basement, and I was just rolling some dice, playing Fantasy, and just, like, playing Skaven, and he, like, curses my guys, and, like, half of them die. I'm just, like, I'm not even pissed. I'm just, like, okay, that happens, and I'll just charge this, and that'll randomly die, and then, like, all oh, this battle engine's just massacring me, but then all of a sudden he, like, miscasts and blows up, and it's just, it's just hilarious. The amount of crap that goes on in Fantasy back and forth, you're just like, Wah! and it's, it's just fun, you just, just, you just laugh, you can't help but laugh when you play. Yeah, 
I, it's much more fun that way. I mean, I, I do a lot of drunken 40K, which I think I did made a mistake of actually recording a battle report and putting it up online. The last one I did, people were like, oh my god, there's so many mistakes in this game, but it's just so cool that you did all the animation. But you guys made so many mistakes. It's distracting. <laughs> And I'm like, well, I have this big old disclaimer up in the front saying, you know, we got a lot of rules wrong because we're drunk. Although I'm amazed how many players still play kind of irritatingly well, well, drunk or inebriated or slammed or any variation in between because, um, yeah, War Machine players like to drink. It's, Oddly it's enough, practice. neither of us, but... Yeah. I, I drink flag. Look at this. <laughs> thing before before the show's over. That's the gallon challenge. I'm staying away from him after the show. <laughs> great progress. I'm only like support Dan. This is ridiculous. Yay. I'm not feeling very well, guys. This is a bad choice. Shut up and keep drinking. <laughs> Milk was a bad choice. <laughs> oh jeez. Gotta make him really sick before we have a game. That's true. We're about to play. Ooh, the <laughs> mind <laughs> games. The mind games. Is I'm from Todd, what have you taught Miranda? <laughs> Our desert scene just became a swamp scene. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, no, when we do Drunken uh, 40K, we just laugh at, at everything. Like, we know, you'll wipe out my unit and it'll just be, for some reason, really, really funny. Especially when you lose really, really bad. Mm -hmm. That's but the that, good thing about wow. being drunk is that I don't get, you know, I don't get upset about losing. I just like but it's part of the game. You know, everything's so understanding when you're drunk. <laughs> so like, here's the thing that turned me off to 40k recently, because for orcs, you play aggressively. You just run across the board. And they're like, oh, there's no tactics. But there is, is because it's how many guys do you send to which unit. Well, there is tactics. You uh, rush everything. That's the tactic. <laughs> Right, but it's also where you hit and and just right. which units you divide. They're actually you need it, but anyways, it's not overly complicated. But you get more experience with it. Um, but then they took out a lot of the shenanigans that you could do with transports and all they slowed you down a lot. And then basically everyone just sat beside behind an Aegis defense line and just shot and they just shot at each other and deep struck some melee units and ran in. And I was like, all right, let's be aggressive with orcs. And you're like, man, they all got shot and died. I'm like. How is this game played again? <laughs> yeah, it became a lot of issues. My playstyle. But things are changing up there because the way they're yeah. doing it. The new Orc Codex has proven that you can charge from a lot yeah. longer. Oh, that's that's just the base. The Codex is just going to be your base from now on. I, I'm thinking the way it looks like. that they're really Because if you look at the latest Codex release, they're kind of really like basic baseline type of rules. And then, like for example, the Space Wolves Codex. I'm reading it. I'm like, oh, this is okay. I don't know what the hell they did in my Space Wolves. Then they released the Champions of Fenris. Is it Champions of Fenris? Is that what it's called? Or is it the, supplement? the supplement for uh, yeah for the Space Wolves. It's called Champions of Fenris. It is, and um, and that is just an awesome, overly awesome supplement that I've ever seen from you know GW. You no, know, I like it now. I could drop my Space Wolves uh, with Terminator. I could deep strike them, you know, and uh, and I like it that I could uh, do a Dark Angel, like Deathwing Assault slash um, Ravenwing type of Space Wolf army. Because with all the lightning fast cavalries and, and bikes now and stuff like that for the Space Wolves, it's just crazy nuts. Especially when you play that certain, uh, you know, supplement, you get a plus one to all your weapon skills if you're, you know, certain units and stuff. So I think all the, all the major, like, flavor for each army for 40k now is coming in from all the supplements. They sell it's you the code. Cuz the supplement costs just as much as like the codex. Yeah, true, but if you think about it, it makes it easier for people for like for them to release a lot more space marine chapters if you think about it. Yeah. You know, it'd be nice to see a supplement on the salamanders. No, that's true. That's and actually like that. would be good. Yeah, I think that's where they're going. I mean, less changes needed to be make, made on the baseline codex and more changes to the supplements instead. Yeah, because the, the orc supplement has some really awesome stuff in it as well. Yeah, the gas one? Yeah. So, like, it's like, oh, 
it's like my Mega Knobs, which are already pretty cool, now can become fearless and plus one weapon skill. And yeah. you're like, yes, yes, please. <laughs> yeah. They're just fluffing the game to the stuff. I mean, it's nice people are going to say, yeah, it's a money grab, which kind of, I mean, you look at it, yeah, it looks like a money grab. But I think if they keep with this and just release a lot more supplements within the codex, they don't have to worry about too much of facking the reg main codex and bringing back flavor to, you know, 40K. We'll see how it turns out. Yeah. We'll see. I haven't played 40K in a while. I haven't. I played one game of 7th edition. I'm like, yeah, whatever. I'm more like into... Yeah, I'm more into... Uh, Valhalla. Are you bringing your stuff to Valhalla? I have some stuff, but I have a lot of people offering their stuff that I could use, I can borrow. Yeah, I was thinking of bringing either my Chaos or 40K, and then I guess my Menoth now. I have to make a list, though. I don't... There's like a lot of new models that are out I don't have anymore. A lot of the new models aren't that great. Oh, really? Your, your solid old list will work just great. They haven't upgrade, updated a edition or anything, right? Same no. thing? Okay, cool. Just, what, only new thing was Convergence? Oh, what, for War Machine? Uh, yeah. Well, there's some new stuff for, like, pigs and troublebloods. Uh, not troublebloods, pigs and gatormen. Yeah, they released a new book with a bunch of extra models for everybody, but it's a okay. while until they're actually going to come out. Things hit harder. I, know I don't know. I think the game is yeah. where it's at. It sounds like from what I hear that it's, it's got fine where it's at, but it's getting stale. I think, you know, there was some excitement with Convergence, and then, I don't know, I don't know what happened after that. It's about the same as it ever was. Just yeah, I don't think more. Convergence necessarily brought a whole lot. There, well, there's the uh, the Cephalix that came out. Oh yeah, that's true. The new mercenary contract. Of oh okay, okay. Yeah, I haven't uh, I haven't been keeping up. But then uh, when I ever played War Machine, I didn't keep up with much. I just liked my mana. That was the only ones that I liked. I didn't like Kador. But then I you know started watching War Gamer stuff, your stuff, and I was like, I should be playing Kador. <laughs> that really made me happy. I read a couple of recent comments where someone said that they were switching to Kador. I was like, yes! <laughs> <laughs> I like the battle report, and I think there's definitely no way I'm playing Kador. Well, one thing I didn't like about Menoth was there's just so much... Well, we'll just have there's to... so much things to do with, with Menoth, it was, like, driving me nuts. And I, I just like a whole beatdown crew. It's maybe if I'm playing. I hate Manoth. Manoth is so nasty to fight against as Signar. Uh, yeah, there's so much counter. As well, I like Man I picked Manoth because of the fire. I just wanted to burn everything, and then everyone's like, well, then you should be playing Manoth. Then they didn't tell me they were, like, religious fanatics, and I'm like, I'm not really a religious fanatic kind of guy, but they got fire. So you just, you're kind of one of those believers that are like, everyone's like, no, oh, burn the heretic, you're like, yeah, burn! <laughs> yeah, burn! <laughs> you're just like up behind them. You're like, yeah! yeah. You're just, oh, burn! Yeah, it's go, go. I'm, I'm gonna be right here having a cigarette. What do you guys burn? Yeah. <laughs> their, their lore is a bit extreme, so. It's like scary, almost disturbing. Yeah. I don't like cricks for some reason. I don't know why. Because they're evil. No, it's not that they're evil. I just don't. No, they're, they're just evil, aren't they? No, they're evil. Pretty much just to the core. Do you are they elves? Do you know any cricks? Are they elves? Are they elves? Hmm? Are they elves, elves are or is that legion? I'm sorry? Yeah, retribution is straight up evil, though. Just kill all, when, when life gives you lemons, kill all humans. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't like el anything else. You know, I agree. I never cared for the elves either, like in, in the role-playing games, like Dungeons and Dragons or Pathfinder or in war games. Well, uh, mainly because everyone who rolls up a character is like, I don't like an elf. Like, I'm like, okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, he's a Hylian. Sometimes he's an elf. Sorry, anyway. Um, comments. <laughs> Any chance of another amazing Wargamer Girl versus Codex Dan game with comical turn counters like last year? So we'll have to find a way to top it, but short answer, yes. We'll probably play some games <laughs> while he's here. And since we're both going to be at Valhalla, then um, there will probably be plenty of shenanigans there. So 
going to be kind of amazing. You can count on it. You Are can all three you guys driving up? We count, we turn count on it. Are all three of you guys driving up? Yeah. Yeah? All in the same? Yep. Because I flew down here, so I have no transportation. Ten hours. We were thinking of making a hitchhike, but... As long as you grab my bags, I'll just hitchhike. I'll just have, like... Truckers of the Southwest can be a little scary. I got a beard to protect me. <laughs> you guys are probably going to have to rent an SUV or something, right? Oh, we have an SUV. Yeah. How's that? All that equipment and all the luggage and all the gaming stuff. I mean, nuts. Yeah. I uh, I brought uh, a big war machine bag. Then I brought like my laptop with some like my camera in there on that bag. Mm. And then I brought a big like a full size suitcase. And I fit another like war machine like war hammer like the solid case and another war machine case yeah. in there. And I like and then all my clothes I just padded around and I put tons of bubble wrap everywhere and I was like. Hope for the best, because it's going through airport security, whatever. And That's it came, what I do. Yeah. I put, I put my KR cases in my suitcase, and all my clothes go around it to protect the KR cases. Yeah. But my army is more important than my clothes. Exactly. Because yeah. exactly. We, well, clothes are just like, hardier. It doesn't matter if they get thrown around. Well, yeah, and then you could go buy clothes anywhere, too. Like, when are you going to go buy a painted Menoth army, right, if something happened? So anyways, the only thing that I've noticed broken so far is my Stormwall's arm. Oh no. But it had like it broke off like right here in an annoying spot, but it had already broke there before. Oh. So, it, so it just a simple glue job and we're good. Yeah, that don't count. At least it wasn't like a tiny little like wrist. Those are the worst to repair. <laughs> the worst. How about that dragon milk are you? It's, Man, you were slacking. I, I know, I can't. <laughs> I, feel, I feel so full. You get anywhere. Apparently my goal while he's here is to make him sick. Oh, I know why I thought this was tomorrow. Because you texted me last night. Yeah, what? Tomorrow was after you sleep. Not well, like, like, yeah, I can't gauge that. I sleep whenever, remember? <laughs> So again, play styles. Um, oh, yeah, that's, play style. that's hilarious. Thank you for that comment. <laughs> Hi, what's, what's your play style? Um, so War Machine actually has taught me to be very aggressive, which has actually really, really hurt me for playing like Malifaux. But because um, in, in War Machine, it's like you want to run up and you have a big scrum in the middle normally, or if there is some shooting, then you usually have dudes that are speed you know, 13-inch thread or whatever, and can run across the board and engage you, and then you have a scrum off the center, but still mostly in the middle. So, you know, run first turn, all that. So I I tend to go for highest casualty rate. Like, even if I'm losing, I'm like, I'm going to take everybody down with me. So then in Malifaux, they're like, you know, there's these, like, strategies and schemes. You yeah, you can't kill. just run up and kill everything. That You'll lose that. It's not, I don't, I don't. It's really hard to adjust. Well, you can. Well, that's that's why my game against Miranda works so well because we both did the same thing. <laughs> I just turned out to be more killy than she was, and then and then I had like so many witchlings that I resurrected from the fiery bowels of your corpses. Yeah. And, you and then they just ran around and did tons of objective points. Amazing recursion list. Yeah. Mm hmm. And I've learned how to improve it. So the playoffs for the Vassal League. We'll see. Nice. Although I'm supposed to play sometime between now and when Valhalla ends, so I don't know when I'm gonna have time or be able to. I thought the league was over. Huh? I thought the league was over. The league is over preliminaries, but now there's a playoff. Oh, so the top the two. Oh, okay. So you got the playoffs, guys. And somehow I made it in the top two. Because he beat me so bad. No, you know how to play. Mario. It doesn't matter. Yeah, you know, Mario. Mario. <laughs> I heard. Yeah. Mario, we pick on him so much. He's, he's nice. But yeah, okay. we totally slaughtered him. <laughs> Gives him something to talk about. Also, I learned that a, almost everything that Mario told me was wrong. Uh-oh. <laughs> about my models. I mean, he would, doesn't really know about my models, but I'm like, what about this? He's like, I think it's this. I'm like, okay, and I played it that way. And the other guy's like, uh -huh. no, 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 it's way better because of this. I'm like... Oh. Well, he knows how to play a game, but he doesn't know all the tactics to everyone yet. He only right. knows. Well, it's not so much the tactics. It's like 
the functionality of things, how things right. work in the game. Yeah. But uh, but Malifaux is so crazy. Of there's so many individual rules for everything. For Malifaux? Uh yeah. Malifaux like each individual character has like yeah, ten like, different things they can do. Oh well, yeah. Like page, and then everybody's got special rules up the wazoo. I mean, yeah, I got worried she was kind of bad with it, but yeah. Malifaux is crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree there. I mean, all the rules are are. All the flavors into each model itself. It's not like you know a unit type of thing. There's no real units to Malifaux. So. Yeah. And the uh, other thing you should try is Dark Age. That's a beatdown game. It's fun. It's easy, and and I like the fluff. I'm like so hooked on the fluff right now. So. I am. You know, I have no time. Any time. Just get one that's cheap. It's actually really cheap to play, and then you just go down and you just beat the crap out of each other. Okay, so bring some Dark Age models about Hala. Oh, Jesus, man. I have to put them together. I don't have time to put all this stuff together. <laughs> I really enjoyed this game. I've yet to build a model. <laughs> <laughs> right, look, I have piles of, like, fantasy stuff here on my table. I got, let's see here. What's on this? I got Infinity, a bunch of Dark Age stuff, boxes of that, tons of Malfo, tons of 40K, tons of whatever else people send me. I always see you building fantasy stuff and painting fantasy stuff. Well, fantasy is my all. I think the, the big, the top game on my list is fantasy. I like it better than 40k. I like it better than Malfo. I like it pretty much better than anything. And maybe I haven't played enough Dark Age to know, but I think Dark Age is going to be up there next to me. Wrath of King is fucking fun. Oops, sorry. Freaking fun. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Don't ask. I don't know. He dropped that bomb. Ruined his camera. Just, like, exploded the camera. Okay. Um, <laughs> My camera's well, all loopy. I would argue though that the different games you play can dictate your play style because well, War Machine very much encourages you to play aggressively. In fact, usually the one who's just the first person to start turtling and defending is gonna lose most of the time. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's such things as not losing on scenario and kind of maneuvering stuff that way, but you're mostly gonna be killed if you don't... I never really thought about that, but I guess that's why I fell in the War Machine so, like, fluidly. Like, it was just like, hey, what's this War Machine game? Like, two demo games later, I'm like, I'm sold. This game is for me, and I love it. And I haven't looked back. Like, I still love it. Well, you can still play casual. You can play casual War Machine. You can, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think think it's just a lot more, you know, more competitive in a way that it's just the way it's built. I think War Machine is, it's very much dictates on who you're playing. you got to kind of know what the limitations are and who you're playing. Because there's some people at the club, I know I have to bring my all, I have to bring like a really tight list that's like optimized, and I have to play that, otherwise I'll get slaughtered against them, and it's not fun to play. Um, because of who they are, and they only bring those type of lists. But the other people that are like new, and I'm like, oh, I can try this weird fluffy list, because they're new, and they're learning, and... I, like, I can bring, like, an inferior army, but because I'm good at playing the game, it can still be a good game. And so I think working at Mini Wargaming for so long and just doing those kind of styles, like, you just get so many people from all over. You can take a look at their list, and you kind of judge by their character mm-hmm. what level they're on, and you I, you try to build. And it's, like, it's a talent. It's a skill you have to develop of trying to build a list to match your opponent when you are a, a much higher skill level than they are. And not always. Sometimes they're just better than me, and I lose, and... Well, I'll notice about that, because when I first started a War Machine, I tried to fluff it, because, oh, look, Orbos, I like wolves. They came with the starter set. <laughs> and, I can, and I just kept getting killed, and they're like, you shouldn't really be playing the, play Menoff. So I'm like, can I burn <laughs> with fire? You know, they're like, oh, you want Menoff. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I want to play a Menoff. I like a fire. Play Menoff. Is there any fire? There is fire in Circle. The, 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 the battle engine can shoot a fire thing. No, okay. But I wanted everything to be fire. <laughs> that one, one thing. Yeah, that one there... thing. No, but like, yeah, they were telling me, well, let's try to figure out what else, you know, what else you can play. Uh, what, what came in the two-player box? I think I, I picked up then like Menoff after Orbos because the Orbos starter set, they said, wasn't really good. You know, and I said, well, what's, like, good, decent to play that you don't get your butt kicked when you're learning? It was, like, Archer dudes, the Archer Tharn Archer guys. On what, Orbros? No, Orbros was yeah. Kayla. Kayla Stalkers. and Orbros. 
Yeah. In the two in the two player battle box? No, the one the, just the starter set. Oh, you know, the starter set. That comes now, with oh, oh, yeah, I remember I play I used to play a lot back then. I mean yeah. but yeah, I think yeah, it was over. So they said you started with the wrong I'm like, yeah, I like walls. I'm like, well what else do you like? I like fire and I'm like play men <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so I bought the men of thunder set. Haven't you read a lot of the rings? When the, the wolves try to eat the, the hobbits in the trees, and then they just light everything on fire, and they all run away? They don't mix, Chum. They don't mix. I don't... I don't... Uh, ignore. All right, sorry about that. Um, no, nah, I, I didn't read all of Lord of the Rings. I read 50 pages. I'm like, God, this guy's so good. So. I couldn't them? get past it. I'm like, look, I don't want to know about Frodo's 50th cousin, because he does that a lot. See, I do, though, so... Well, I mean, you introduce the character. I don't want the whole family history. And he'd love to do that. And I'm like... This is, no, this is The Hobbit. That happens in The Hobbit, which is actually quite fun and jovial and quick, pretty quick-paced. Uh, you also have to understand I don't like Hobbit-like characters. <laughs> Probably. I don't think it would... Would it take you nine hours to read that book? It's a big book. I have the books. I just don't read them. Well, here's the thing is I don't like Hobbits. I don't like the, I don't. I'm I'm like a yeah. I'm a sizeist or sizeism. I have high sizes. I don't know. I don't like the little hobbit halfling things. Like in role playing, I don't let anyone play hobbits or like little mischief, like thieving little hobbits or anything. Or what about dwarves? Dwarves are cool, because you know they're. That's what, that's what the hobbits about. It's about a bunch of dwarves and a wizard and this little hobbit tagging along. Oh, then maybe I should pick it up because see, you know, hobbits. I don't like the hobbit things. Look, like. Look, the, the Lord of the Rings movie, I would probably... I hate the Lord of the Rings movies. I hate it. Take the Hobbits out, I'll probably love it. Really? But, you know... Yeah, because you take the Hobbits out, you also take a while... You know, let's take out the Walker. But Chung, Hobbit saved us all. The Hobbits no, were the missing link. No, I hate that. Ones. I despise that stupid storyline. The little guy, underdog, saves the world. No! Because he's so insignificant that he can't be corrupted fully by the ring. But see, that's so unrealistic. One walk into the cave with a big old spider, the little guy's going to die. There is no, I mean, no way. The guy doesn't have armor. The guy doesn't have a big sword. But he had the vial of Galadriel. That's the only thing that saved them. Otherwise, they would have died. No, it's just as stupid it's as a woman, hero in chainmail bikini, getting hit a billion times and still survive throughout the movie to save the world. Just doesn't happen. Chainmail bikini does not protect you. And to make a movie out of a chainmail... Just don't get hit. Oh, well, that's true, too. Just don't get hit. <laughs> See, yeah, it's like, yeah, that works, too. It allows you a lot more agility. That's right. Don't you, you played Pathfinder and Dungeons & Dragons. You know it's dexterity. Yeah, not that's just true. Armor. That's true. See, that's There's why I always wear a chainmail bikini when I LARP. Because oh, it gives yeah. me more freedom of movement. Yeah, but you know, you say things like that, Dan. It doesn't surprise anyone. It's like, oh, he wears chainmail bikini. Yeah, whatever. It's Dan. I'm just, I'm just giving you the reason now. Not, no, you're, but, you're Dan, Dan, but you know, there's, there's actual logic behind it. Mr. Miyagi's number one rule: don't get hit. Yeah. Duh. Duh. It's like sometimes I just wear, you know, the bottom. I, I, I it's a little revealing, but I take off the top, like the Spartans of old. You no, know, but that could be, you know, an <laughs> argument. I think you're yeah. scaring your audience. What else is new? I don't know. Well, uh, let's see, here's a good uh, argument. Chainmail bikini, right? You're like, well, how does any, how does that protect anyone? It doesn't. It makes you more dexterous, so you don't get hit. Then what's with the chainmail part? Why don't you just wear the bikini? Because you might get hit there. <laughs> there you go. Then now you're getting hit. Now it's not going to matter anymore. <laughs> I hope you get hit there. It's an argument. See, if I get hit in the gut, I'm going to die. Who cares? But if I get hit in the nuts, I might survive. And I don't want to live in a world Where there's without no nuts. nuts. Yeah. That's just, just personal opinion. May, people may feel differently, but... All right, let me rephrase the circular argument until Dan gets involved. <laughs> He'll break the circle. I apologize for our audience now at this point. I'm so sorry. This got, got out of hand. You wanted to talk about play styles. Places that I didn't expect, and I, I don't know why this is considered a play style. <laughs> it is a play style. Or fighting style, style. You know, wearing a chainmail bikini as your armor, isn't that a play style? 
That's not, that's you want to be more style. dexterous. That's a play that's style. Just a style. About... Yeah, okay. It's a style. Right. Well, we could go back to play style, but then we talk about Ari, the competitive edge, talk about the casual edge. What other play styles are there? We should probably wrap it up. <laughs> <laughs> She's done. She's done. Okay, we don't need you. We don't need you at all. <laughs> I'm just joking. I need, I need you to talk while I drink chocolate milk. I don't want to drink anymore. No, don't drink anymore. Drink <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay, we're gonna end it here. It's been about an hour. Yeah. Uh, I can't wait till Valhalla. I'm oh, sorry. Valhalla is gonna be so much fun. I'm so excited to see you, yeah. Tom. Yeah. Well, I'm only I'm gonna be there Wednesday and f- to Friday though. That's fine. Okay, yeah. we'll get in some game. I can watch you pull your psychological warfare. <laughs> I can't. My whole psychological warfare and tactics playing against you is trying to remember how to play the damn game. <laughs> Don't worry, That's I'll be my there. tactics. I'll be okay, there. I'll just tell you how to play, and then you can just focus on your on your skeevy schemes. Okay, sounds good. That no one should ever use because that's terrible. Sport They're control. terrible. Yes, disclaimer. Don't ever actually do this. <laughs> I just got to try to mount my uh, harbinger onto a base. But okay. Bring a washer. Good enough. I wonder. I wonder if orcs have any kind of resilience towards chocolate milk. I don't know, but Miranda, you can let me know. You can let us know like later, like tomorrow, if he had any resilience to his chocolate milk all night long. <laughs> we'll give you a full report at Valhalla. <laughs> until then. Thank until you, then. everybody. For Bye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I should I should click stop now, right? Yeah. Yeah. I haven't clicked it yet. <laughs> okay.